Hey nurses, nurse germs here. I'm a dialysis nurse here in the US and welcome back to my channel where I upload videos all about dialysis and my journey as an immigrant nurse here in the US. How to become a dialysis nurse here in the US? I got tons of comments asking the same question and I just can't give out a proper answer due to the limited number of words. So I figured, isn't it a perfect way to start the new year if you get to tick things off your goals to do list? Because for today's video, I'm going to discuss as much as I can remember from my five years journey of becoming a dialysis nurse here in the US, starting with the agency, direct hiring, processing fees, and some employer agreements. So if you're ready, hit that like button, smash the subscribe button, and hit that bell icon for a new video every week as I take you with me in discovering nursing career. To guide you throughout this video, I'm going to put some timestamps below that redirects you straight to the topic you are looking for. But before anything else, just a disclaimer, everything in this video is based on my own experience and not intended and not be understood or construed as professional advice. I can't believe how a mere referral of an email address has gotten me here in the US. That was the year 2017. Although I was already enrolled in a review center for NCLEX, I haven't yet pictured myself working as a dialysis nurse abroad. It was just all about passing the exam first. And that very email address was circulated around the dialysis unit, resulting in more than half of the total number of our staff applying for it. Which explains why it took me two years to take the exam because we had to take turns for the available slots of leave applications. So right after I sent my resume, I immediately got a response for the in-person interview, three minutes plane flight away. But who's complaining when it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity? I was interviewed by the Davira International Recruiting Team themselves, so it was totally a nosebleed experience. Days after, maybe three, I received my offer letter and contract. I was under an agency, but with a direct hire agreement, which means from that day on, the agency Worldwide Health Solutions took care of the whole EB3 visa processing, but as soon as I arrive in the U.S., I'll be directly working under the employer, Davida. EB3 visa processing needs I-140 filing, or what we call immigrant petition for alien worker that can only be done by a U.S. employer. Some may opt to hire private attorneys to file and help them with the documents, but most staff agencies to do this stuff for them. Thus, you can't apply directly to a U.S. hospital or a clinic if you are still in the Philippines. Before I'm going to give out the link for the application, here's what their contract usually means. They call it International Nurse Loan Agreement, which at first I literally comprehend it as a loan. But what it really meant is that it serves like a bond agreement to the nurse that covers the cost of certain expenses such as initial training costs, immigration legal fees, airfare, moving expenses payment of $2,500. And in return, the nurse will comply with all the terms and conditions of his or her employment for a minimum period of three years. And the amount is $15,000. So if you decide to leave during the first year, then you have to buy out the total loan amount. But once you successfully survive the first year, the succeeding month after will be like 1 24th of the loan amount. From what I've understood, you're down with $10,000 for the remaining two years, meaning it will be like $417 per month. And whatever remaining months that you decided to leave, then you simply multiply it by that. The amount owed will be deducted from the nurse final paycheck and if ever it is not sufficient, then arrangements should be made to repay it within two years. I'm not implying you to buy out, but to help you understand the contract. And there is a certain phrase that you might also want to check out. 
If such forgiveness is the result of the nurse working for three years after beginning his or her employment with the VIRA, the loan, to the extent it does not exceed an aggregate of $10,000, will be included in the nurse gross income and wages for FICA and income tax withholding purposes in the year the loan is forgiven, if ever. So to anyone who's finished the contract, have you received anything? Then it's for us to find out. The loan amount was five years ago, but I've heard it's now $20,000. The offer letter is simply your proof of your full-time employment as a dialysis nurse that contains your hourly wage, medical benefits, immigration legal fees to the execution of the International Nurse Loan Agreement that I previously discussed, airfare, $2,500 relocation expenses. I've received four different offer letters for the duration of five years waiting. My facility was changed three times because I got the final one, which unfortunately is currently closed. So I had to do my training in a temporary facility when I arrived in the U.S. A month after, I was once again transferred to a different facility to fill in because the nurse there just resigned. It's the clinic I am currently working at. My hourly wage, $34.54 of my first offer letter, was consistent throughout until it was changed in my last offer letter. That was 2017. I had two years experience that time, then five years later, I already accumulated seven years of experience and it changed, but I am not sure if that was the main reason behind the wage increase. Also, as everyone would say that you can negotiate for the increase based on your experience, once you arrive in the U.S., I didn't have the courage to do it. It's easier said than done. Seeing an increase from my initial offer was already enough for me. The medical benefits, however, from the offer states 60 to 90 days after employment, but it starts exactly a month after as soon as you apply for it. They give you a one-month deadline for that. The agency managed my airfare ticket while the 2500 relocation expenses will be given as soon as you submit the reimbursement request form, which should be done within 30 days of arriving in the U.S. So, are you ready to become a dialysis nurse in the U.S.? They usually require at least one year experience, so if you're good to go, here's where I apply. I will also put the link in the description below. Direct hiring works differently from that of an agency. Agencies do all the paperwork for you, pay for all the exams and processing, so in return, you work under them and have all those deducted from your wage for the agreed contact hours. It's simply paying what they did for you. So the more they do something for you, example from NCLEX, IELTS, Visa Screen, etc., the higher your deductions will be. In direct hiring, you do it yourself. They'll just tell you what to do, give some suggestions, guidelines, and reminders because the employer only pays them just to do specific things. In the end, you work directly under the employer with full benefits and no deductions. I've already mentioned the specific things they covered, so the following topics will be the rest of the stuff that you need to do yourself. I won't be discussing each, but a rundown of all the fees and expenses you need to make throughout the process. Should you go for a direct hire or just settle under an agency? <music> Application fee varies between states ranging from $100 to $150. Most states require CGFNS or the likes for credentialing or verification of your education, which now costs $475. The school documents needed to be verified are TOR, RLE. I got mine for around a total of 600 pesos, so it depends. Some also require a high school transcript which can be secure for free. Your PRC also needs to be verified. As far as I remember, I paid a total of 275 pesos. 
Some states have an additional step of fingerprinting. Then sending each of these documents adds up to the total amount. Depending on what courier you'll be using, DHL, for example, costs a minimum of 2,300 pesos for documents going to U.S. Once your application is approved, you are now eligible to take the exam under the state you applied for. Eligibility varies per state. For example, NY does not expire. NMI gives one-year eligibility while New Mexico may have the same one-year eligibility but only allows four takes with 45 days gap from the last failed exam taken. The next step then is to register at Pearson View to have the authorization to test that costs $200. You have to make sure you register only when you're ready since it is only valid for three to six months, which means you have to take the exam within that period. On the other hand, scheduling the exam is another $150 payment. <laughs> There are states that require English exams, but for the most part, it's used for visa screening. Before, visa screening only allowed IELTS in TOEFL. Now, PTE and OET are as well expected. Here's how much each test costs. IELTS is 11,900 pesos, TOEFL 13,921, PTE 11,900, OET 26,100. Each test has the same two years validity, but once you applied it for visa screen and got approved, validity extends for five years. The visa processing starts as soon as you pass the interview. That is then followed by the offer letter. Then you'll be assigned to a case manager that will ask for initial I-140 documents that contain a copy of your general info sheet, signed job offer letter, diploma, TOR, PRC license, resume, passport photo page, and then NCLEX and visa screen if applicable. The next stage is ETA 9089, which you need to sign and mail back to them. This is a request for permanent labor certification where the prevailing wage is determined appropriate for the certain job position in a certain location. Once approved, you'll proceed to filing of I-140 application to U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, USCIS, with needed documents that your case manager asked prior. This is paid by the employer, but if you opt for premium processing, it will then be you who'll pay for the amount of $1,400 as far as I can remember. Once I-140 is approved, you'll have your priority date. In order to proceed to your case, your priority date or PD should be current in the visa bulletin. And for the Philippines, it has been current since July of 2019. I can clearly remember since this was months after I passed the exam. The next part is the National Visa Center that will issue fee bill of $345 for the candidate and each dependent in the petition. This is the part where your visa screen should be done before you pay the fee bill. This is also the part you need to inform any life-changing events such as marriage. You'll then be asked for your civil documents such as birth certificate, marriage certificate, NBI clearance. Afterwards, you'll fill the DS-260 form online. You'll be documentary qualified after two weeks and wait until your documents are in transit to your U.S. Embassy location. And once it becomes ready, you'll then proceed to schedule your embassy interview date. But before the interview, you must undergo a medical exam at St. Luke's Extension Clinic with the updated fee of 18,540 pesos for 15 years and older, while 11,400 pesos for less than 15 years old. I have uploaded videos for the medical exam and embassy interview, so go check it out. 
after your visa is issued and you receive your visa packet, you can then pay for the USCIS immigrant fee of $220 each per person. Flight ticket is paid by the employer with $1,300 budget while you pay for the dependents. Depending on your agency or employer, for my USA arrival, they offer four days hotel accommodation, but I did not avail this in exchange for staying with my relatives. But of course, I claimed my 2,500 relocation expenses. I've uploaded my USA arrival, US transition, until my first day of work in Davira, and for the rest of the videos, all can be found under USRN Visa Application Playlist. That's it. Hope you learned something from this video. If yes, don't forget to click like, leave a comment for some video suggestions, and of course, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. See you next video.